Welcome everybody to Liverpool, where we have this extra mass this week to celebrate the great solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. Now, just a little thought for the children. Freddie Freckles uh, suddenly realized something that he never thought about before when his teacher said to them, you know we talk about the Catholic Church, and then she said, and we sometimes talk about the Roman Catholic Church, and that's because Peter was the first pope. He was the first bishop of Rome. That's what the pope is. He's first of all the bishop of Rome. And Pope Francis is very clear about that. He reminded us of that the day he was elected. And then, of course, Paul also made it to Rome. And I think the thing that really got Freddie was when he started thinking about journeys in those days. What an extraordinarily long journey that was from the Middle East, from Jerusalem, where the church began when Jesus formed the church. Of course, Paul joined a bit later. He wasn't there when the first of the apostles, the 12 of them, were chosen by Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit came to them at Pentecost. But he became uh, a true apostle, and in a way, the church thinks about it, the, the church being built of these twin pillars uh, who went to Rome, and both of them, of course, were martyred. They died for their faith just as D Jesus did. So that's something to think about. The days before aeroplanes, before buses and trains, even before bicycles. Uh, just imagine what sort of a journey that must have been. Maybe sometimes going on camels or donkeys the way Jesus did. But anyway, um, Freddie couldn't imagine that. Trying to get from Liverpool to London without a train or a bus or an aeroplane or something. So there we are. I'm just going to top and tail today's Mass uh, with a verse of For All the Saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So let's just pause and pray that we may worthily celebrate this wonderful feast day today. We ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Herod started persecuting certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John. And when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. This was during the days of unleavened bread, and he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers each to guard him in turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. 
All the time Peter was under guard, the church prayed to God for him unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood there, and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry, and the chains fell from his hands. The angel then said, put on your belt and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, wrap your cloak round you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea that what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had walked the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and has saved me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called. The Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. The angel of the Lord rescues those who revere him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end, I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all the pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he is John the Baptist some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there we are. We hear about the way God preserved both Peter and Paul so that they could do his work until the time came for them finally to be martyred and to go to the Lord. And we now, with Peter, are asked that question, who do you say I am? And we say, with him, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so we make our act of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And on this day we pray especially for the successor of St. Peter, Pope Francis. We pray for the whole church throughout the world. We pray for those people who are being persecuted for their faith. We pray for those people who have a special claim on our prayers, suffering in different ways. We pray for those closer to home in our two parishes who need our prayers and have asked our prayers. We beg the intercession of St. Peter and St. Paul, and we beg the prayers of Mary, our mother of perpetual succor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that what we have asked in faith we may indeed obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayers of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so, each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, remembering especially Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we rejoice as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And why don't we offer each other a sign of peace? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And just for a moment, I pause and pray with you, those of you who are at home, not able to receive Holy Communion from the altar, but perhaps sharing something at home, and certainly praying that our Lord will now fill you with all the graces that come to us when we receive him in Holy Communion. Lord, reach out and bless our children, their parents, their grandparents, all those who join in this Mass, those who perhaps live alone, 
and feel a great sense of being united with the whole family of the church in this way. Bless them all, Lord. Amen. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are my Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me, as always, and may the Lord bless you today and throughout the rest of the week. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. O blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia.